This is Jason with Context Found, and we're going to do a speed walkthrough of OpenAI's new GPTs. I'm going to call them GPT bots to avoid confusion. We jump right into your page. If you are a Plus member, this should be your homepage with the new configuration, just the GPT-4 multimodal does everything. But we're looking over here at the Explore tab. Here is where your GPTs that you create, your GPT bots, live. And then all of the ones below them, the example bots made by OpenAI. Presumably this is where the marketplace will live once it comes online. In order to create a new GPT bot, simply click on the plus to create a GPT. There are three sections here of interest in the editor. First section is a chat window with the GPT builder. This is a bot itself that actually conversationally walks you through setting up properties that will define your bot. The second section is the preview window where you can actually chat with your bot in progress to test things out. And then third section is the configure tab. Here are all the properties and the values that actually define your bot. All that you're doing in the conversation with GPT Builder is populating these handful of values and that is all you need to create a bot. So we will start our journey over on the create tab because it's kind of cool to see GPT Builder in action. It asks you right off the bat what kind of application do you want to make? What do you want it to do? I am simply going to tell it that I would like to create a journaling app that lets people talk about what happened in their day. This is recreating some of the steps that I made for reflection, my reflective journaling app. Here we see an animation and GPT Builder is updating GPT. It is actually setting configuration variables in the bot itself. Most likely here it has written some of the configuration. And we see that it has created the byline or description for the application on what it does, a journaling assistant to help users reflect on their day. Here, being proactive, it even suggests a name as well, Reflective Journalist. The interesting part is that you can have a dialogue about what you want with the GPT Builder. I'm going to say, hey, let's go with Reflective Journaling instead as a name. And it's generating a profile picture. So, of course, this is GPT-4 multimodal. And GPT Builder is taking what we did and generating an icon or a logo for the application rather nondescript, but we're going to go with it. And here it's asking us if we like this photo. We're going to confirm this in a minute, but it's also updating something. And I actually am just watching it crank through a few things. It's interesting, since this is a dynamic bot, the interaction journey that you take with it in order to create your bot will be unique to whatever you do and from session to session. And all in one go, what it did without me confirming anything is that it had generated this icon or logo for it and had taken my suggestion for the new name and set both of those to the application. This way, you can create your whole bot without ever leaving the GPT Builder chat window. But we're going to go over to the Configure section and see what has been going on behind the scenes. The first setting we have is the icon itself, which was generated for us. And if we click on it, you can either regenerate it using Dolly, which we're going to do because that one was a bit boring. And without further input, probably based on the rest of the description, it will regenerate a new image. Now be careful, I don't think there is a way to get back to the boring one that we had before. So you might want to save it because the other option is to upload your own photo, which will just open a file selector for your operating system, and you can upload any image that you have created. I believe this image is only ever displayed about 72 by 72 pixels, so don't go overboard on getting a real high quality image. The next configuration item is the name. This can be up to 50 characters currently, and is what is shown to users to reference what your application is. Now this name does not have to be unique in your own environment to your own account, nor does it need to be unique in the world, because you will have a alphanumeric prefix, a unique one generated and put into it. So when this goes live, you'll see this crazy string followed by reflective journaling as the title. So you don't have to land grab 
as if it was a domain name that you're trying to get the first one to it. You can name it whatever you want and you can change that at any time. The next item we have is the description. As we said, this is the elevator pitch or bumper sticker pitch of what your application does. It can be up to 300 characters long, which is not much because this really kind of serves as the only instruction manual or hint to the user of what you do and how to interact with it when they start chatting. And then we get to the meat of things, the instructions. This is a good old fashioned system prompt that tells the GPT bot what to do. The instruction prompt entirely defines what your GPT will do. There are no further instructions that define its behavior. You have up to 8,000 characters, not tokens, 8,000 characters in this field to define a system prompt that will guide what the bot will do, how it will act, how it will handle circumstances. And this prompt can be generated through interaction with the GPT Builder bot. But I will warn you, when I first got into this, I went hog wild interacting with GPT Builder before I understood where it was being used. And I put all sorts of detail in it. And it really had a hard time condensing that down. The end result on the instructions were heavily weighted in some of the last things that I chatted about. I recommend that if you want to sketch some things out with GPT Builder, keep it higher level, use that as a draft. But when you get into the instructions, test it out, but you're going to have to do some good old fashioned prompt engineering if you want this to act just the way that you envision. The next section that we have for configuration are conversation starters. Again, GPT Builder has pre-populated these with some guesses. Now these are the conversation hints that you'll often see on your standard chat interface. But you're most likely going to have to customize these. You see, what you have to remember about these conversation starters, think of them as simply a button that copies and pastes into the chat something as if you had written it. So with this first one that had been automatically generated, if I say, how did today's experience make you feel? When I select that, it's going to post it in as me. How did today's experience make you feel? As if I'm asking the bot. And of course, the GPT is going to come back and say, I don't have feelings. Let's focus on you. We have to come at this with the right paradigm. The things that are put in here have to be good suggestions for a person to kick off a conversation from their voice. So we're going to remove this automatic suggestion and you can just delete items out and add them down here. So what is something new you tried to do today also does not fit the structure. Reflect on a moment that made you pause. There's obviously a glitch in how they have set up GPT Builder and how it generates these conversation starters. I'm sure this will be fixed along the way. One thing I really like doing is having a conversation starter that helps introduce the person to the application in more detail. So here, what is reflective journaling and how can it help me? When we have this conversation starter down here, again, it will put it in your voice. So if the user pushes that button, effectively they will be asking, what is reflective journaling? And then the bot will use its understanding of itself to give a description of what it does, how it's intended to be used, and what the user can do to interact. Another thing to keep in mind, I don't know of any limit to the length of these. So if you want a very long suggested conversation starter, you can actually put that in. This is a good time to point out that at least according to GPT Builder bot itself, the model that will be running your GPT bot is a GPT-4 architecture with a 4,000 token context window. Take that with a grain of salt because previously when I asked it, it was saying a 2,000 token context window. I do not think it is running the 132,000 token model behind your custom GPT. The next configuration area is an interesting one. It is the knowledge files that you can upload. These are reference files that the GPT bot 
will have access to in the back end and will use to look up as reference information. It appears you can use both text base and image files to reference. According to the GPT Builder bot, these files are not actually stored in a vector database, but will be searched and quoted from on an as-needed basis. For reflective journaling, I don't need any reference information behind the scenes, but I could picture uploading here written standards pertaining to your bot's work. Or if you wanted to create a bot that would converse with some body materials, maybe the text of books or transcripts of video could be put in here. It isn't stated how many files you're limited to, or how big the storage can be either for each file or in total. But David Shapiro, I believe, ran into a 10 file limit when he tried to experiment with it. The next section for configuration is capabilities. This is where you can turn on and off the web browsing, Dolly image generation, and code interpreter. For me, for reflective journaling application, I don't need them looking up the web or necessarily generating images. On second thought, why not? If the user wants to ask for it, I will enable it. But I don't expect there to be any calculations needed, so I'm actually going to turn off Code Interpreter as well. The final area of customization is Actions. GPT bot actions correspond to plugins as we see with the Chat GPT Plugins Edition. So just as we have the tools that interface with all of these APIs, we can define our actions using the same open API schema that we use to create plugins. If you have a schema hosted somewhere, you can even import it directly from the URL. In this drop down here, they give some examples of schemas. So, for example, the weather data gives you an example, the definition of the interface to the API. And with this example down here, we see the methods that we get from this interface. I have not dealt with plugin creation myself on the back end, but it looks there is authentication that you can configure here if you need to authenticate into the API, and presumably a link to add a privacy policy statement for the user to read. It appears that you can only have one action defined for a GPT bot, which means that you are limited to the one URL but can have multiple methods associated with it. My understanding is that this would correlate to only being able to enable one plugin, but there is a lot of power in defining custom actions and interfaces. And this is really where the secret sauce will live in order to differentiate your GPT bot from anyone else that just is using a prompt engineering approach. Below it, is a drop down for additional settings. And this is where they hide the checkbox so that we can disable using the conversations that occur in this GPT bot to be training future models. Now for reflective journaling, I do turn this off since users may be entering more sensitive information, but consider leaving it on to make these models bigger, better, faster, and stronger over time. And that is all you have at your disposal for customizing and creating a GPT bot. While developing the instructions prompt, or in order to test the functionality, you can utilize the preview chat to interact with the GPT bot you're creating and see if it's displaying the behavior and interactions that you're looking for. Anytime you can stop generation if you have seen enough, and all of these settings are usually auto-saved, which is good because if you go back out of the editor, you'll see your GPT that you created in your list of my GPTs at the top. But when you go back in to edit it, it will clear the GPT Builder chat and the preview chat, which can be a good thing if you're looking to get a fresh start and try a different prompt. Speaking of saving, in the top right, the save menu allows you to publish this GPT bot so that only you can access it. If we confirm that, then it will show up under my GPTs, but it's only accessible to you. It's locked out to the public. The second option is saving this and making it accessible to only people with a link. 
if you go this route, you have to have a privacy policy that the user can view. And if we click on what it's looking for, this is going back to the bottom of the actions sheet under privacy policy. So you need to put in a URL to a public facing privacy policy in order to enable only people with a link sharing. And once you have the URL to that, then it will allow you to share only people with a link. And here it is published. Let me grab this link and put it in a new tab. We're able to access it directly and it will start a new session interacting with the GPT bot. I didn't see any validation. So I wonder if this is an underdeveloped capability because this URL is the standard one that you access each time you interact with the bot. Perhaps in the future, this will relate to being able to search and find it in a store when it becomes enabled. And the last option for saving is to save it as publicly available, which is the most interesting to me. And again, it gives you that same link that we saw, and it gives you the option to go directly to viewing that GPT. So using that link, as I said, with a unique character string in front of it, and then the name of your application, you enter into a standard chat window, but this time around, you're interacting with your very own custom GPT bot. Congratulations. Once you start a conversation with the GPT, it will show up here under your chat history. But just like standard chat GPT, you can create multiple sessions and new conversations with each bot. When you start a new session, it is created on the side as a new chat with a separate history, even though both of these are utilizing the reflective journaling GPT bot. As you use GPT bots, they will show up on your sidebar, both in the conversation history, which you can delete, and at the top, but you can hide these from the sidebar without affecting your past conversations. They will still show up in the same places under explore. And if at any point, you can of course, delete the GPT or go back in and edit it for a continual improvement. This has been a speed walkthrough of the process I used to create my own GPT bot that was important to me, Reflection, a reflective journaling and conversation partner that utilizes a prompt I've been working with for a while manually to refine. This GPT is publicly available and I invite you to try it out and see if you get value out of it. Link below. I highly recommend trying out this process because it is very approachable and rewarding. And please share in the comments any bots that you create along with any tips or tricks you learned along the way. This has been Jason with Context Found, and I'll talk with you next time.